Hello everybody, I'm really sorry about that. I was just trying to stream this and record at the same time and I'm kind of new to all this. But what I wanted to say is that, um, you know, Taiwan is really important. Um, it's very important for the technology industry. It's very important for the biology. It's very important for the climate. There's so many aspects that makes Taiwan super important. Um, however, it's not the only really important island in this region. You also see Hunan Island, and you also see Sri Lanka Island being very important, and all well, approximately about the same size as well. So this is going to be kind of a detailed topic. Uh, we're going to go through quite a lot of information here. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to get through everything, but uh, we're going to do our best to try to do as much as we can to really understand what's going on in Taiwan. Uh, hopefully before there's any problems there and just kind of go into agreement uh, about some things So I'll tell you my personal Philosophy is that it's really nice to have different countries at the same time It's nice to have just one passport that works everywhere So if you're in a small country sometimes your passport might not work in all the other countries. So it's nice to be a part of a big country sometimes So one of the reasons I wanted to cover Taiwan tonight is because there's a lot of work there a lot of technology, modern uh, technology, really depends on Taiwan. Um, I would say something like 25% uh, or more uh, depends on Taiwan. And then of the modern, most advanced technological achievements, a lot of those have basically revolved around Taiwan. So I want to show you kind of an interesting graph uh, that kind of surprised me at first about what's going on in Taiwan. Um, let me get that graph here if I can. Give me one second here. So, yeah, so here it is. So this is the exports from Taiwan. Um, so I don't know if you know much about the year 2000, but there was a dot-com uh, revolution or whatever that happened in Silicon Valley. But really what happened is that that shifted out of Silicon Valley and went to Taiwan and to a large extent. So a lot of people left uh, their jobs in Silicon Valley. Uh, and then moved back home either to China or to Taiwan or other areas um, and started to really make a big impact globally what's going on with electronics, machinery, chemicals, you name it, um, Taiwan is probably involved in this, similar to how Japan is involved with uh, the automobile industry. So I see a bunch of different friends online right now. Um, I'm gonna try to go through some questions and see like, it's way more fun to kind of look at uh, what people have questions about, about Taiwan in specific. So I do have the question window open here to see like what's all going on uh, as we discuss this uh, in detail. It's probably gonna take a couple hours, so um, take your time. But uh, at the same time, I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as possible. So what all are we going to look at? Well, we're going to look at the infrastructure of Taiwan. We're going to essentially see every single little power line that's going on in the city. Um, it's a really awesome city. One of the reasons I wanted to cover the, uh, Taipei in particular is it's one of the most unusual cities on the planet, uh, both from climate and also from just the way that it's shaped and everything about the city. So we really want to look at that carefully. We're going to look through all that and then compare that to essentially Hong Kong. So. It's so close to Hong Kong, you can see it's only about uh, you know, a few hundred kilometers uh, or so from, from the mainland. And then from there, it's another few hundred kilometers to uh, Hong Kong and Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and basically the main part of uh, southern China. So uh, there is a lot of deforestation going on. As you can see up in the mountains, they've not deforested. But it's actually quite a beautiful country. There's a lot of trees left there. Uh, relatively speaking, you can see China has deforested a lot of this and this is hard to deforest this is not like easy stuff to deforest it's very hilly in here so the fact that they are deforesting this really says a lot about what's going on a friend of mine's in forestry he said that he really appreciated some of my uh little discussions on different countries around the world and it's been really fun i just talked with him today about it um, but he's a forestry guy and he's definitely working really hard to work on like he picks up different problems around town and tries to just Make sure everything's going awesome around town. So um, anyway, so here's a soil map. We're going to look at the soil map in detail. We're going to kind of go zoom in, look in specifically in Taiwan and compare different regions. We're going to look at more of the like mountain ranges in Taiwan and see some of these weird little islands off the coast of Taiwan as well. Um, and then also the geology. So it's actually kind of weird geology in Taiwan because it's such a fast paced uh, geological area um, with all the earthquakes going on in that region you'll see what we're talking about here and then of course uh, probably this is the most important map 
and we could just spend hours just on this one map studying the fishing and the boating industry in Taiwan. It doesn't look like this anywhere else on the planet, and you can see a lot of that is from mainland China and particularly Shanghai. <coughs> Excuse me, in Beijing. Um, and then we're going to look at more of the boating areas and kind of look at that in detail to see like what's going on and then kind of compare Taiwan and where they're getting their food, right? So they have millions and millions of people that live on this island, but where are they getting their food? Are they getting it from China? Are they getting it from Thailand? Um, and then what's going on in nearby places like the Philippines and Japan, right? So if they're getting a lot of imports and exports, still, where does that food come from to feed all these people? So that's an interesting question to look at in detail and then here's more of the topology you can see it's actually very hilly it's not just a little bit hilly in taiwan it's extremely hilly they got much bigger mountains and that's because of the earthquakes as we'll see later on in this discussion so um and then here's kind of the population um now it's kind of hard to understand what's going on here but this is taipei up here so actually their major city is actually not really even a major city compared to what else everything else is going on here in all of taiwan so there's quite a number of cities that you might not be familiar with outside of Taipei that are actually really nice. So if you fly into Taiwan, you actually fly in from outside the city, I think it's over here in this region, and then you take a, a train into this into Taipei. So it's actually quite far, and it actually might be nicer to live and work in this region over here where the airport is. So that's what they're kind of trying to do. Uh, but the reason is, is that Taipei is so interesting. It's got a really weird little river and islands in the city that are really interesting. So kind of remind me a little bit of actually Korea, Seoul. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with Seoul, but it's kind of like a river city as well that heads out into the ocean. But interesting uh, to see some relationships there between two major cities around the world. Um, here's kind of looking off into the distance of China and you can see how important Taiwan is in terms of population. It is pretty heavily populated and pretty heavy farming is going on all along here. Then here is the major train routes. So they have high-speed trains, unlike in the United States. You'll see all these orange train lines in the United States. You'll also see red lines, which are high-speed, 100 mile an hour, or 100 kilometer plus per hour uh, trains. So there's quite fast trains going all around Taiwan. Um, and basically more of the population, and you can see basically this population is quite significant when you consider Hong Kong, and Shenzhen, it's actually probably more populated in Taipei here, which is a really interesting fact because Guangzhou is probably about as populated as Taipei. So that's pretty far a city and a lot of people have never even heard of Guangzhou. Um, and yet um, almost everyone has heard of Taiwan and maybe Taipei as well. Uh, the traffic on a typical day was interesting to look at. So you, this can help us understand where people are trying to get to and from. And you can look, this is the 9, 9 a.m. traffic uh, on a Monday. So you can just kind of see what's going on as well as some of these uh, train routes that you might be able to take around the city. Um, and then here's just another overall map of that whole, what's going on in terms of the, uh, excuse me, uh, overall traffic on the island. And then here again is kind of looking at Asia's imports and exports. You can kind of see um, essentially what's going on. Asia is definitely has ramped up since 2000. The dot com crash right in this region, right in here. Just right, draw, draw a line there. It's basically completely gotten better ever since the dot com crash. So that kind of says something interesting about the the uh, industry. So basically, while uh, the internet is still kind of the primary focus of many companies in Silicon Valley and on the West Coast, basically China and Asia and the rest of the world has kind of taken off with uh, hardware industry. So the hardware is actually very important to discuss uh, in general in Taiwan. That was one of the primary reasons. And you can see Asia is just totally dominating that. Um, there's almost nothing left outside of uh, for any other country in the world except for in Asia in terms of exporting hardware. So I mean, if you're in the electronics industry, I know a couple of people that are probably listening in right now on this. Um, and basically, I mean, there's nothing left. So pretty interesting graph to look at um, overall for the electronics industry. And you can see exactly where that's going to, primarily the United States. That's going into cell phones, new computers, new laptops, as well as India. And um, uh you can see Russia is actually getting a big picture of that in Europe, and even Brazil is starting to become a big factor, as much as Canada, right? So, 
Um, that's all very interesting to look at. This is the export graph map, and then you can see kind of the imports. They're actually importing almost everything from China. So that's one reason why China says that it's part of, of uh, Taiwan is essentially all the stuff that's coming is going right into China and from China. Um, and then this is for the uh, overall industry. You can just see uh, exports for electronics, and you can see here approximately 50% of the world's electronics comes from China, 20% comes from Taiwan, 12% comes from Korea, and the rest actually is almost all from Asia as well. You can see Japan and Vietnam and Malaysia. But if you're not familiar with this and you're using a computer, you should definitely be aware of Taiwan. So that's why we're basically discussing this because it's such a huge chunk of almost everything. And you can see the global market share is just keep going up in uh, electronics, particularly for Taiwan's Taiwan's global market share, meaning 10% right now. So that's kind of debatable as well. Uh, and you can see their industry has kind of collapsed over the years. There's certain years that Taiwan has not done super great. Um, and But in general, the electronics industry is really taking off overall. So there's some more graphs here. Um, and then I wanted to look at the climate map last. So um, one of the other really interesting things about the climate in Taiwan, let me see if I can get that graph, is that it's actually got several different climates. So you'll see this in Hunan Island right here, um, but, but in particular in Taiwan, it's got some of the same climate that you got in mainland China, but it also has a little tip of this red and pink stuff. This is kind of like what we see down in Florida. So this is like heavy Florida. Florida is more of like a pink color. So this is like heavy jungle once you get down to the red. So it's very important that Taiwan does have a little bit of tip of that red jungle there on the south tip of Taiwan. I'm going to pause this and then let people catch up if there's any other questions or things and then we'll maybe try to go on with the discussion in a little bit here. Thanks so much. Okay, well thanks a lot. If you're interested in discussing Taiwan in great detail with me, I'm going to publish a couple more uh, detailed images from this discussion. Uh, Feel free to text me. My phone number is 773-321-8181 or it's just ashermartin at gmail.com. Uh, I don't usually check my email too often, but or you can just maybe just put a post down at the end of the video here and I will try to get back with you or text me on any kind of social media platform. Anyway, I'll see you later. Thank you so much. I hope you really enjoyed this study of Taiwan. Ciao. So a couple, couple comments on the power uh, in Taipei. Um, so you can kind of see there's definitely uh, some of these outer stations, substations, where they kind of reroute the traffic. And then there's also some power plants that they have uh, kind of positioned pretty far from the city. But actually, this is pretty close to the city when you consider a couple kilometers. So if anything goes wrong, um, it's actually quite close to the downtown Taipei, which could be a big problem. Um, and... There's actually a little bit of a mountain range in this area, so it does kind of protect it if there's some nuclear energy at all in that kind of area. But still, it's, it's an interesting question because the uh, earthquakes are so huge here in uh, Taipei. I would say personally that these earthquakes are probably more serious than what could happen in Japan, but maybe that's just a personal thought on this. So when you compare Taiwan to mainland, it's actually very similar to the kind of architecture. So it's likely that uh, a lot of the help uh, for this has happened from mainland China. So a lot of people here work, uh, could have done power work along this coast as well as in ta Taiwan. So it looks like very similar kind of diagram. But then by the time you get to Hong Kong, a lot of that is basically similar to what you'd see in Guangzhou uh, or Guangdong. So just looking at the tree cover imagery here, you can see <clears throat> essentially it's kind of like the trees are basically 100% lost on the west coast of Taiwan. <clears throat> um, and then the urban areas also being very important as well. Now, the main point I would make here is there's a couple key points is that this southern part is very vital because what happens is they start to think, well, we're going to deforest this and then we're going to also deforest this island here and this island here. So they essentially start deforesting the islands as well so then that really takes place right here on this northern part of the island so and that's even raises some questions about this tip here being very important as well now on the global soil map you can start to also see some of these more details so essentially what happens is that as you get out to the islands they start to think that you can do the same thing whatever you've been doing on the mainland 
I mean, because it's a pretty big island, but at the same time, you start to deforest the whole entire island, and then you start to go into the ocean, and as we saw in the fishing maps, which we're going to see in a couple of slides here, this is what happens with the fishing. It just becomes way overfished. So it's really important to get it correct on the main islands here uh, to take the habitat very seriously, as well as especially Japan. And I think Japan, because it's completely deforested, uh, not completely deforested, but it's completely populated in all the areas that you can possibly populate places in Japan, um, except all of the mountains. Um, you know, it's basically just very important to look at that carefully in Japan, um, as well as in Korea. Uh, and then even in Shanghai, it actually starts to become a question mainly for Hong Kong, right? Because there's so many more people down here in Hong Kong. So they basically transfer from Hong Kong over to Taiwan and then Taiwan back to Hong Kong. And some of the attitudes that work on mainland do not work in Taiwan in terms of environmental activism. And this is the main reason why right here. So you basically have all this farming stuff coming out of here. This is all drains into the water. Uh, and then you have a couple key spots right in here, right right here and here, and then kind of going down here. And then some major biodiversity regions here. So this, this area right here is probably areas that need to be protected, as well as you start to see some of this little inlets. And this is also Taipei right up here. So really it should be... <gasps> Uh, very carefully watched, but this because we saw the forestry coming off of here We really want to look at this very carefully um, And then this this whole land area in here because you have actual farmland right there Remember they're farming up along here. So basically this what this means is this whole pathway right into here As well as coming up through here becomes the vital areas of soil and farmland and then actually to a secondary extent right in here um, and then heading out to the islands Right, so, and then I'll just put an X right here, right? So, this map gives you a little more detail, and you can start to see this whole area right in here, how these river systems might work. So, this actually becomes very critical farmland on this new side. So, this is the kind of the classical side of the farmland is this part, and this is basically all the China side. Right. And then the, the deep sea ocean stuff really needs to be watched really carefully on this side. Now from the geological map, you can really see how these, these island chains really start to become very important. So you see all these islands off the coast here. And then really this being really vital to discussion as well as right in here, um, heading out to Hong Kong. So you can kind of see through here to Hong Kong. And then even Shanghai, because it's so close, actually being really vital for Korea as well so it's kind of hard to see but essentially Korea is very vital for what's been going on in all of uh, Shanghai and then Japan also kind of heading out as we go to the US US out this direction so on the fishing map you can see there's kind of this whole chain out to here and this really suggests that Japan and everyone <laughs> you know coming out of here from Shanghai and up into Korea, so I don't really even show it how bad it is there, but basically this whole side, the north side right in here, and then look at this, this is just huge amounts of fishing going on right here out of Hong Kong, so, and that even gets more serious <clears throat> as you head down the coast. So hopefully this will explain a little bit about the farming situation in Taiwan. Um, essentially they're very dependent on Beijing and Shanghai, right, so this is the nearest farming zone as well as you know, they even depend more, they probably depend more on this Korean area of farming than they do depend on Thailand. Um, and then essentially what happens is they repackage a lot of the food and then send that off into uh, Manila and the Philippines. So, and then likewise, you can see this pathway kind of here, this fishing pathway between Japan and Taiwan as well. So, you know, between the fishing and the, uh, you know, land-based farming you know there's a lot of different details here that need to be looked at and i didn't even uh, i didn't even explain how important this is here so basically because there's so densely populated people here you know basically hong kong is hugely important as well as hanoi here and then this is even very important because this gets out into the ocean so once you get into the southeast asia this basically gets down into jakarta indonesia and some other areas so I learned a lot from diagramming this population map. Uh, you can really see some really important uh, pathways. There's kind of like a fault line that runs through these mountains. 
So basically this area right through here, although the actual road infrastructure might be very different. So you can see there's actually some roads that go over these mountain ranges here. Um, the actual pathways for the farming land actually tell you quite a bit different story um, that this little pathway is very important in Taiwan. This also shows you some really interesting things about the population here. You can see that as they get up into the mountain range, which they this should be all forested in through here, right? So they're starting to see that there's certain roads here that actually are impacting the new farmland quite a bit. It's also important to look at the detailed farmland. You can see there's kind of some separation between these two cities here on the south side and then how that kind of impacts the whole forestry region all throughout here. So you're gonna have, you should have... You should have kind of a foresty region in through here. So on this map, you start to, start to see some weaknesses in uh, how they're, th they're thinking about work, right? So basically, it's all centered around Taipei. However, there's kind of the new Taipei area and the old Taipei. Uh, and then there's also some debates about this region out in here. So this is probably should be 100% farming land. But while you're seeing 9 a.m. traffic, get in here this is going to be a lot of farmland that should be this so this is kind of their farm route so you should we should see basically a route like this that looks healthy going in and out of the city um, and then some maybe some new development happening right over in here and then possibly over in here right here's kind of the uh overall picture from the entire island in terms of what's going on in terms of traffic at 9 a.m on a monday Okay, so that's all I have for the discussion for tonight. Um, I'm really uh, excited about looking at the traffic situation. I think that that can be really explored in much more great detail than what we've done tonight. So definitely tell us a little bit more about that. I posted the links on the traffic, so if you wanted to take a look at some of that details and start to study where the businesses are, what kind of improvements we can do, do in Taiwan, that'd be super awesome. Thank you so much. See you later. Have a great night. And I definitely hope the best for China and Taiwan. Thank you so much.